Hey guys, this is Bob O from HeliFreak, and I just want to make this short video here, I'll try to keep it short anyway, on how to remove a pinion from a motor without the use of a pinion puller. Um, I do not have a puller, I've never had one, I don't even know how one works. Um, I only have the tools um, that I've uh, accumulated over the last year on uh, that I use to work on my planes and my helis. Basically, um, a set of needle nose pliers, hobby knife, and um, just my set of Align hex drivers, um, just the four piece set. And I also use my soldering iron, <clears throat> it's just a standard 40 watt iron. And um, the reason I use that is because of the thread lock that I used on the shaft when I installed the pinion. Um, I did that because this shaft has no flat spot for the grub screw and uh, I wanted to make sure that this pinion wasn't going to slip while I was flying the heli and so um, I loctited the pinion to the shaft and also loctited the grub screw. So that's all great and everything. I've never had a pinion slip. Problem comes when you want to change pinions for whatever reason and um, you cannot get it off by hand after doing that and so this is what I do I just the very first step of course is the easiest one remove the grub screw and set that aside so it doesn't get lost and in order to break that thread lock bond um, in there I use heat and just my regular soldering iron here, I just um, apply it to the tip of the motor shaft and at the same time I put my finger on the pinion so I can feel how much heat's being transferred and it, it will not take long and I'll, I'll be able to tell you here in a few seconds because you can feel the heat through the pinion and right there it's pretty darn hot. In fact, I can't hold my finger on it anymore. And I figure that's hot enough to break the um, bond from the thread lock. So I'll unplug the iron. Don't forget to do that. So I always like to do it first. Get it out of the way so you don't burn yourself. Now even with that thread lock bond broken by the heat, it's still hard to grasp and pull and in fact it's still a tight fit to the shaft so this is where the tools come into play what I use first is the needle nose pliers um, stick the pliers in the gap between the uh, pinion and the motor don't squeeze the shaft because you don't want to damage it or the little clip that uh, retains the shaft um, but you would want both ends of the uh, or both jaws of the pliers to be under the pinion and be careful not to pinch these wires here and just give it a very slight prying action until the pinion moves a little bit like that and you don't want to pry any more um, other than just to get it moving because what you'll end up with is this huge angle here like this and if you keep prying you're likely to damage this portion of the motor or you'll be applying side loads on the pinion and possibly bend your shaft don't want to do that either so what you do at this point is get your smallest hex driver or whatever other tool you're going to use that can substitute and um, you know for the same purpose here hold it up against the motor shaft if you can like this and then use the pliers again under the pinion so as you can see the tool keeps the or takes up the gap that was there and so now you have you don't have this huge angle that you're going to be prying on and instead of prying on the motor case now you're prying on the tool and there it goes up some more now 
switch to a bigger tool. The bigger the gap that you make, because the pinion is sliding up the shaft, the bigger tool you need. Same thing. Pry it up some more. Okay, it's pretty high up the shaft now. Um, this is the largest hex driver I have. I'm going to do the same thing over again. Pry it up some more. And now it's almost off. Um, you might be able to, at this point, just grab it and yank it off. But um, if you want to keep going with the tools like I do, the last step I use is with the hobby knife. And same thing, set it down there so you're prying against the hobby knife and not the motor case. And keep prying a little at a time until the pinion pops off. Just like that. The new pinions will generally go on a little bit, or a lot easier than they come off. Um, they usually go on by hand. But uh, anyway, as you can see, the um, pinion came off easily uh, in little increments as you use the bigger tools. And doing it this way makes it so you do not damage the pinion, the shaft, or the case of the motor. Other than you might end up with a couple of um, scratches, um, which I'm sure um, I've done that considering I've had about, um, I don't know, five to ten pinion changes on this motor. And also this is the mating surface for the motor mount, so it's possible it could have got some of these uh, um, blemishes from that too. But either way, there is no damage to the motor. And if you don't have a pinion puller, feel free to try this method. It's what has worked for me without any problems um, over this one year that I've been flying electric helis. And um, hopefully this video was helpful to demonstrate um, the procedure that I use and hopefully it will uh, benefit you guys as much as it has benefited me.